Hey, Planeswalkers, Mithras here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Welcome to today's episode of Top Tech, my friends, where we're going to eat, drink, and be merriment. Uh, that is correct. We are playing a top 1,000 Boros merriment deck. I appreciate you tuning in today because we do have a lot coming your way. So you can tune in down below to the portion of the video that makes sense with the timestamps in the description for you, where we're going to talk about the strategy and objective of the deck. We're going to run through the deck list. We'll talk about the sideboard, how to sideboard and then wrap that into a nice little how-to guide for you in best of three and then additionally we're going to go play some magic competitive magic in both best of one and best of three with you with this deck today now last but not least we'll come around and talk about some of our final thoughts where this deck fits in the meta and those kinds of things so planeswalkers we do have a lot coming at you today so we're going to dive right into it here but before i do i just want to say thank you um i really appreciate your support so please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there and like the video all right so here's what we got going on Right away, it's a Boros Merriment deck, so it's all about the two colors, Boros, which are both red and white, or the Mountains and Plains uh, mana, and additionally, it is about this card here. So I do want to spend a second on this because it's pretty important. Uh, this is Outlaw's Merriment. Uh, it's an enchantment at the beginning of our upkeep. Choose one at random. So we can create a, to a red and white creature token with those characteristics. Um, a 3-1 Human Warrior with Trample and Haste. A 2-1 Human Cleric with Life Link and Haste, and a 1-2 Human Rogue with Haste. And when this creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. Um, so what also inspired me playing this deck we played a deck earlier uh, in the week, I believe, or maybe it was late last week, uh, with one or two merriments in it, um, and it was a lot of fun. So I'm happy to be, be playing this top 1,000 one here today for you. Um, but what the win conditions are in this one is it's obviously extremely heavily uh, creature-based, so we can see that here. Um, so we have plenty of win conditions um, in terms of doing it. We get constant pressure here with Outlaw's Merriment, which is very important. This is probably kind of like a Boros aggro deck to be honest um, because everything is at a two drop um, and mostly three or less that's going to do something we do have top and support here between ox of agonis to refill and as well as ember cleave to kind of hit over the top um, so this is pretty important that is how this deck is going to uh, pace and play is at pace and at aggro speed. Um, we have that ability to control the board with a few things. We have ability to go over the top. We have the ability to grow and then additionally keep up that constant pressure with something here uh, with Outlaw's Merriment. Um, so that is how we're going to pull through today. I'm very excited to play this. Now we're going to go ahead now and move into a little bit more detail within the deck. Um, so we do have Giant Killer here. This is a 1-2 drop where we can destroy the target creature with power four or greater or we can use it as that one two to kind of tap creatures down uh, it's nice because it has that adventure ability we got the good old luminarch who's going to add to your uh, creatures with plus one plus one counters we have season hellblade who's a three one that has a discard a card ability giving this guy indestructible until end of turn we got kerrigan the intimidator um, cowards can't block warriors and this guy does a lot of things so lots of triggers with plus one plus one creating cowards and giving uh, trample to other warriors we got robber the rich where we can bring uh, this rogue human archer in uh, it's got reach it's got haste and every time it attacks we're going to exile one of our opponent's cards should they have more cards in their hand than we do um, and what's going to happen then is we're going to use our opponent's deck against themselves so that's really important we have a nice modal land here in shatter uh, skull smashing helps with um, not flooding on your lands and then additionally we can deal damage here um, x damage as we choose if x is greater than uh, six we're going to double that damage and that damage is going to be dealt between one or two uh, planeswalkers or creatures um, or it's got that pain land ability where we can have have it entered uh, tapped or untapped where we are going to pay uh, three life to have it come in untapped now, we also have Maul of the Skyclaves. This is a nice over-the-top card with this equipment uh, where it enters, we can attach it, and our creatures will get a plus two, plus two, have flying for a strike, and we can always re-equip it there for four. We got Skyclave Apparition. So as I always say, this is one of my favorite cards um, from Zendikar's Rising, one of the most powerful cards uh, within the white uh, color pool here. Now, when it enters, we can exile target uh, non-land permanent 
uh, non-token permanent we don't control with converted mana cost four or less, then if uh, this creature does leave the battlefield, our opponents will get a XX blue illusion tree creature token uh, with the equivalent mana cost. We got Bone Crusher Giant here. This is another adventure card where it will deal two damage um, that uh, can't be prevented or damage can't be prevented this turn. Um, additionally, again, two damage to any target. And then obviously we got a 4-3 body. If it's the target of a spell, uh, that spell's owner will get two damage uh, dealt to them. Then we get Outlaw's Merriment, which we covered. We talked about Ox of Agonis quickly here, but really what this one does is when it enters, we discard our hand, we draw three cards. It's got that nice escape cost for two there. Um, exile eight other cards from our graveyard, and this will also enter with a plus one, plus one. And then we got the good old Everglade, this flash legendary artifact where it costs one less for each attacking creature that we have. When it uh, enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature we control, and then equip creature is going to get plus one, plus one, and have double strike and trample. Um, we got Castle Ardenvale um, and a few other lands here, modal lands, scry lands, those kinds of things. Scries work okay in this deck uh, because we are mostly at a two drop, so I do like this. Um, I would do maybe two things. Um, with with this particular deck. So one, um, I, again, you could go with a, you, you could run a um, Bonders Enclave if you wanted to, to draw, because you got a couple different engines here um, to kind of help you get there. And obviously you got Luminarch. You could also run Crawling Barons, which is one of my favorite things. Um, the other things that you could consider here, you could go, uh, instead of Shatter Skull Smashing, you could go with the Angels on the top in there uh, as well with the White Moto Land. You could add another Castle Ardenvale. Um, you could also go maybe one or two um, uh, castles for the red color that gives you plus one uh, damage on your creatures when you tap down as well. So those are a couple thoughts. The other thing that works really well in this deck um, that is missing is uh, you could throw in Torbran. So Torbran is also going to really be nice on the Outlaw's Merriment triggers here. Um, so particularly that one two human uh, rogue when it enters dealing one damage to any target, that's three damage. That's a big ping. Um, that could be something that you could consider uh, within this deck. We're running a nice, healthy 23 lands, plus four, 27. That's a lot um, in a fairly aggressive deck, so I think you could also maybe potentially cut some lands there. So very excited about this, though. Obviously, I'm not the one in the top thousand with the deck, um, but very, very fun, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing this, this one for us here today. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the sideboard, and then we'll talk about how we're going to sideboard as well. So first off, we got Soul Guide Lantern. This this uh, card enters. We exile a card from a graveyard. Additionally, we can uh, sacrifice it um, and exile a opponent's graveyard or all cards in an opponent's graveyard. We can also use it for draw if we need. So you're going to play this against decks um, that are more mid rangey to late game. Potentially, anything using a graveyard uh, is where you're going to want to run that. Uh, Disenchant. So here, destroy target artifact or enchantment. These are primarily going to be used strongly against um, potentially mono red or mirror match. Um, also, any Doom decks, any decks that are kind of late game Yorian decks, uh, you're going to want to play this. You can also play it against Gruul, uh, hitting Great Henge kind of a thing. Then we got Maze Mind Tomb. So here we get the scry counters um, or page counters. We can scry and draw a card, and we also get life gain back. Um, I would run this and against any deck that you're gonna gonna need life because you're really not gonna get a ton back here uh, minus uh, the two one uh, human cleric, um, so that can really make a difference. Primarily mid range to late game, this is good. This can help you find answers, um, particularly some of the things like disenchant that you may need or soul guides lantern kind of a deal. Um, Phoenix of Ash here, Flying Haster, Fire Breath, plus two, plus zero, Escape for four, uh, enters with a plus one, plus one counter. You're going to run this against Rogue decks. You can run this against late game decks like Doom decks as well. Um, this is going to be very crucial for us um, to leverage our graveyard against Rogue decks, just like Ox of Agonis. Um, then we have Soul Seer. So this deals five damage to target creature Planeswalker that permanent loses indestructible to end a turn. Great against any creature based deck, um, primarily aggro, some mid range as well great to hit yorian out of the sky if you need that um there but really nice again don't forget that this will take out a heliod in a life gain deck as well 
Um, then we got the Akron War. So the Akron War here's a nice little enchantment saga where it does three things: gain control of target creature um, for as long as this remains on the battlefield until next turn. Creatures our opponents control attack each combat if able. And then last but not least, each tap creature is going to deal uh, damage to itself equal to its power. So this is going to excel in the early game, excel in the mid range game, definitely against creature based decks. Great against the um, uh, Great Henge, uh, loving uh, Gruel decks or Gruel aggro decks. Um, so keep those those things in mind. Again, we covered Ox of Agonis. I like this late game. I like this against Rogues. And then we do have a Crawling Barons in the sideboard, my friends, if you need it. Um, here in particular, um, I, I do got to give some credit because um, even though I called it out main board, and I, I still am a, a fan of it main board, um, you do have it here for sideboard. You're going to play this more in the mid range to late game. So Planeswalkers, that is the main board, that is the sideboard. We're going to talk about now how we're going to sideboard between aggro, midrange, and late game, and then we're going to go play some competitive magic for you here today. So in the aggro matchup, um, we're fairly well set. Um, a couple of things that I would change, though, is I wouldn't mind Soul Seer. I consider the Akron War um, because that's going to allow you to pull some of your opponent's key cards. Um, and again, I just like Crawling Baron, so I'd probably switch it up. Um, so realistically, I mean, at a minimum, two up to the top and maybe six, um, what would I cut out? Um, I like Giant Killer as a removal on the top end. Um, honestly, we talked about there being quite a few lands. Um, you could always cut one or two lands to get you there. Um, the other things that I would consider uh, moving out, if it's more of that aggro matchup, is even an Ox Begonus potentially. If you really, really want to be fast, um, you can always keep one of these at the top end. The other thing that you could do, um, even though it is a Merriment deck, uh, you could always look to cut one Merriment as well. And what this is going to do is pull some of the deck more forward uh, to be more aggressive. Now, the cutoff is definitely here in terms of how you're going to play the match and gain some uh, mid-rangey long-term uh, value. Then in the mid-range battle, it's going to be a little bit different. You can try and go under uh, and be a little bit quicker with your deck. Um, but as we discussed, you'll most likely pull in Soul Guide Lantern. Um, if they are more creature heavy, you may want to throw in the Soul Seers. Um, again, same with the Crow and War. Um, probably the Crawling Barons. Um, and potentially even Ox of Agonis uh, if, if you want. And Maze Mind Tomb could always be a thing too. Here you, you may or may not move as much. So really two to four. Um, you could go with the lands uh, slot. Um, I do like the Merriments here. Uh, to keep. So in terms of optimization and things that I would maybe change up here, um, and it's going to depend on if our opponents have good removal or if they're more focused on creatures, um, I would actually look to remove Kerrigan. Um, keep Season Hallowblade again on that discard. You can play it off well with an, a discarding of the Ox of Agonis. Um, if you wanted to play that game too, you could also move in uh, the Phoenix uh, to help you in that space. Um, so those are a couple spots that I would consider cutting up. You could also potentially move out Giants Killer there um, if you're not going to hit creatures. So that's the mid-range lineup. Last, we got late game. So these are decks like uh, Yorian decks, uh, Doom decks, Control decks, those kinds of things. Um, so here you're going to be fast, but depending on what you are going to face, um, you got to be thoughtful. So probably Disenchant, maybe Maze Mind Tomb, uh, and, and probably Crawling Barons. And then maybe some of these other things, depending on what what you're going to run into. So maybe four. Um, what I would look to move out, probably Giant Killer, to be honest, because um, they're not going to be real creature heavy. I still like the pressure here, um, but if I were to remove anything, I'd probably remove Kerrigan, uh, to be honest. I still like the discard removal. I like the pair with the Ox of Agonis getting the value later um, kind of a thing. I like keeping Outlaws Merriman on the board. Um, and this way, we still have access to... Uh, blowing up some of those enchantments and other things that we may have to consider and then also managing with things like crawling barons or digging for answers with maze mind too um, so that is the lineup that is the guide in terms of how we would line up and move things out from the best of three sideboard uh from uh the main the first match uh into the other matches against the aggro the mid-range and the late game lineup so if you do have questions my friends please let me know down below always happy to help um as well and we do have a discord server so um with that said planeswalkers we're going to go play some competitive magic now with this top 1000 boros merriment deck um so this is what we got going on we have the jeskai zerta deck 
uh, Zerta control deck from yesterday. You guys check this one out. It's super fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, but today we got the Boros uh, Merriment deck here. So let's go ahead and dive into it uh, and get started. Now, Planeswalkers, if you do have questions or comments, I'll just reiterate uh, here. Please let me know down below. Happy to help. Uh, additionally, we do have the Discord server, so you guys can pop in there. Um, and before we get started here against Yabo, uh, Yab00, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate your support. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there and uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Now, I did forget to uh, give a quick shout out because this is Day Tor Torio's deck. Um, so, congratulations. Uh, on hitting the top thousand with this. I believe you actually hit in the 600s. Um, so very, very cool. Uh, our opponent goes first. We got everything that we need here, so I'm gonna keep it. We got some scries for setting up. We can play the Shatter Skull if we need it. Um, and a few other things. We're not gonna kill anything here off the first bat. Um, I'm actually gonna table that one. So let's see what our opponent brings, and then we'll decide on how we got to play. All right, so we have a double speaker here. Uh, Take one off the board now. Very, very nice. Um, so unfortunately. Oh, it's not the right coloring. Oh, no. All right. Let's see. We can recover. We needed the double white. So we should have played that as our white earlier. That's okay. All right, we will bail on that. We did not have a good setup uh, in terms of starting off, being a two versus a bunch of one drops in a life game that's just getting bigger was not a good matchup for us today in best of one. Um, so let's go ahead here and see if we can exact revenge um, on our next best of one opponent there. So thinking of some other considerations for this deck um, would be like putting the spike modals in as well. Um, that is something that you could certainly do to kind of help with this. So again, we go first now. We got a little bit better start. Um, I will keep this. We have better land smoothing. We're not going to make the same mistake twice, hopefully, but we'll find out. Uh-oh. So we have a another... Mono white life gain deck off the bat. So maybe we'll get our chance to exact that revenge uh, like we talked about. So here we will do this. I will go red first. Mm, didn't attack him. I was not expecting that, to be honest. Ooh, a mana.
We're not going to block. We need to start making that guy a little bit bigger. Such a bad, bad lineup here. question is, do they have lethal uh, if they get there? I don't think so. have to take this guy back. I'll give him a chance to bring it back one turn. Oh, I should have done a stack, actually. Uh, because they're still going to be able to activate it. Shoot. That was a mistake. So here's where you could pull in souls here. Uh, not gonna matter a whole ton now. Let's see here. I'm gonna actually do this. And we'll go next. We'll keep making some things bigger here. That one I don't get, but I'll take the one, take the four damage. Oh yeah, first strike. Ah. Oh. All right, not our day. Not our day. The triggers, the triggers. Life gain, double life gain. Hard to beat the number one deck in best of one. So we'll keep going, we'll try again. 
bad lineups today. That's okay. We ran we ran very nice the last couple days, so I can't complain too much. Um, we got Rody here. Let's see what we got going on with Rody. Um, so terrible starting hand, so we'll mulligan. We got something a little bit later. We can keep this one. Um, we're going to have an interesting lineup here with that, so we do want to keep this. I think we drop the giant uh, killer here, and then we'll search, and we'll try and get to four. If we get all those merriment going, um, we'll be pretty good. So we'll keep six. We'll dump the giant killer. And we'll keep that one. We'll keep the pressure on fast. Uh-oh. There we go. Oops. So now if we need to dump something, it will be the bone crusher on this one. All right, so it's probably an Esper Doom deck. with lots of mud. So we'll go grab that other white. All right, let's see how much damage we can get in here now. So they have enough for doom. They can wipe our board at four. Oh, that works. Now we can make this guy a coward, too. He's not a warrior. Let's see what we got here. We'll go coward and plus one, plus one. Now, all we need to do, depending on what the, how they play this here, um, we'll be close to lethal. So we have a similar play again. So they got something there. So we want to keep the pressure up. Keep that back in case we need to discard. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's a white. Seven. Not Ugin yet. It's close, so. We don't have the nice. Nice castle there. Uh, here it comes. Oh, we're 
good. We gambled and we got it right. Boom. There we go. Makes up for the mono white life gain deck. So, oh, or uh, one and two uh, today. So, not bad. Um, worked where I thought it would. Struggled a little bit against the life gain. That's a tough deck, no matter what, for best of one. Um, so does well against the early game stuff probably aligns better against non mono white decks um even in the early game but uh nice nonetheless so late game mid range is going to have a better better lineup and matchup so let's go ahead now and play our best of three so let's go to that traditional uh standard ranked here with our top one uh 1000 boros merriman deck again by uh de uh Torio. um so congratulations all right, so let's hop into our best of three match here. I won't lie, I ran out of disk space, so we had to restart this. Um, we'll give it a shot, but anyway, as we're as we're kicking into it here for our best of three match, I uh, just want to say thank you, Planeswalkers. I appreciate your support, so please feel free to subscribe down over there. Like the video if you like it, and you can follow me on Facebook and uh, Twitter and Twitch as well. All right, or like me on Facebook. So um, with that said, we got Oscar Akolzi. Um, so let's see what we can hit here. Um, we came off our best of one going one and two. Um, I like this start. We get a couple of things, so we'll, we'll go with this. We got a uh, late game deck here, um, and we'll go from there. I will keep that. We got the two reds. We just gotta keep everything on the board, my friends. I'm actually more likely to pitch a Luminarch, maybe, or another season Hellblade. We'll just have to think about how we how we do that here. Alright, so we can certainly do this. The only thing I don't like, um, certainly about this, is the exiling is super painful. Get rid of that. Especially when we have uh, everything at the two drop slot. So if you guys watched uh, the best of one stuff, you'll see that that was something this deck was certainly open to. In terms of board sweeps, we got four color here. Mm -hmm. So maybe control, let's test it. Let's see what we hit. Ooh, they hit it. Watch this card here. Oh, no. I can live with that. I can live with that. And let's look. So hopefully they don't hit the Merriments. Um, I'm okay if they take off the Season Hellblade. More concerned if they hit Outlaws Merman, but we'll find out here. No, well, they didn't. They didn't take it the first time, so that's fair.
Ooh, there we go. Four eights, not enough. Do we take the Yorian off the board is the question. I think we do this. I think we can still play that. And grab this back. So as long as they don't have an exile, we should be okay here. If they have a board wiper, everything's too um, and even, so we're going to be pretty much wrecked. So again, they still got one more mana. They have enough mana to wipe the board. Don't need to play this. We're good. Knew we get enough damage in. Uh, didn't lose what we needed to, so we're good there. Um, we need to think about how we want to play this now. Um, this is not good. Uh, this is still aggressive. Uh, don't want to play that. Uh, we need the enchantments. The soul seer is not bad. Um, I do like that. And I like the tombs. We didn't see Dance with the Mance. It could be a Dance from the Mance deck. We don't know yet. I'm going to hold this off for one. Um, what else can we change here? We'll drop one land. We have more of. Yeah, that's fine. Mountains, plains, perfect. And we'll go from there. We could go another ox and we could go some flyers. Just thinking of what I would change here. Maybe we'll go one more and then we'll drop another land. We'll do that. Plenty of lands. All right, planeswalkers, let's see what we can do against Oscar here. Akultsi in the late game match versus a slightly, you know, aggroy, definitely aggroy, uh, mid rangey type match. So we can keep this. We got all the lands that we need. We got the doubling up. We're not going to have the same problem we had in our best of one game where I misplayed the lands. Yeah, it happens. It happens. We'll go like that. Gotta let the damage go through first. In case they would have killed it. They can kill their own guy still. Oh, they didn't do that though. That would have been a big whiff on the Bone Crusher there. Good news is we have an answer to that. We also have ox, two oxes.
I'm okay with that. No creatures there still. They bounce that in, it's not gonna hit anything else either. Got that. That's that was the wrong thing there. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we get one less on that. Discard that. And we're going to spend four taking this thing off the board. Nothing they can bring back right now. turn clock on your end. Ah, there is the Dance of the Mance. So we'll need to throw in... Um, we'll need to throw in some of these other things here. Which is fine. They hit what they needed. Let's go into our next match. I'm going to grab that. Um, I like the Soul Seer. I'm going to add that in now. For a late game play. Ah, we just didn't hit. It's not the right play. We just didn't hit what we needed. I'll drop one ox. The double ox killed us there. We'll try it again. Just not a good second match. Good first one. So let's see what we can do against Oscar here. Let's play. We'll keep this. It's not fast. We're going to try it though. So we got this. We got a few things.
No reason to be fast on this. We're not in a hurry. Ooh, and they're miss. That's going to be costly for them. There we go. We got one of my favorite cards. We'll go this guy. We'll go this guy. Draw. Now we need to get a bunch of these. gonna hit this for sure uh, actually what we're gonna do is do this We can just keep putting pressure, so we'll do that. We'll slow play the barons, so we know they have these. Keep that. We're going to go thin. Grab a white. See how they tap out here. Get that crawling barons going. If they get too greedy, it's fine. We can deal with that. So they still have a kill spell if they're keeping the black open or the swamp open. Now it's too bad I didn't have two mana open um, just to be able to hit a few things here. I could still live with that.
This blown the two open. We're good. Yes. We pulled it through. Oh, good, good match there in our first best of three. Let's go ahead and play one more best of three. The deck, you know, plays better in that mid-range to late game, I think. We were able to keep that consistent pressure on. Um, very, very nice there. All right, let's go on to our next one here. And this, by all means, is certainly a, uh, a best of three deck as well. So let's see what we can do here. Oof. All right, to cat it is. We'll play first. Ooh, uh, we're gonna mulligan. Oh, kidney stone. I know one of you said that. <laughs> oh man, this is just like incredible, incredible luck. Um, I mean, obviously, if we get Susan Hellblade on, we got plenty of stuff we can pitch. So, you know, might as might as well stick to it, huh? Just keep th just keep thinning on the fables. We're gonna keep it. I don't wanna I don't wanna keep getting smacked around here, so just do this. Let's pitch. We'll get two of them out. Get that thinning going. Wow, so many lands. That is a lot of lands. For this for this deck. That's like Pretty much aggro anyway. Mono whites? Could be mono whites. Looks like a mono white deck. Smells like a mono white deck. Could be certainly a mono white deck. And we lost the two mono white decks in best of one. I think we're going to have a tough match uh, here in our best of three as well, uh, unfortunately. We're going to have to go with the Sears uh, for sure. I think there's one more planes. There we go. Plenty of planes. Gotta keep the pressure on. Yeah. Exactly. Gotta keep the pressure on. Don't even think. I think the first damage will go through, so we're pretty much hosed on that anyway. The only way we're going to be able to come back here is if we can exile the Speaker of the Heavens. Otherwise, well, that's game. I'll, I'll wait for one top deck, and we'll see what we can get. This is such a bad matchup for the stack. It's unfortunate. Three, four, five, six. So we can go four. Not gonna kill this thing. Hmm. 
Yeah, they're smart enough to keep it. Let's go on the next match. Bad match. Oh, so many mono white decks today, you guys. So many. They're certainly counter decks to mono white. Just so you know. <laughs> this is not it. <laughs> um, what am I going to do? We're going to do a Crone War. We're going to do a Soul Seer. Artifact or Enchantment. We can keep that one off. Uh, what do I want to get rid of? Get rid of these guys. This is good. We'll drop that. Um, do we want them all? Sure, we'll keep them all. Um, too many lands. Too many lands for me. Alright. Let's see if we can bring this one home. We have a lot of ground to make up. We were first, and we still got stuck with just crap lands. Crap lands. Let's try it again. Oh my gosh. Before it was too many, now it's not enough. And we'll go from here. We'll see if we can survive two turns. This has been a day, but that is how it goes in the world of magic. I don't know why you're saying hello. We're going to mute you. And we'll go from there. Oh. Oh. Let us drop. What do we want to drop here? Merriment at this point. These are still better. All right, that is a concede. Voila! On the lands today. Wow. The amazing games, my friends. So anyway, enough of this deck today. Um, anyway, with that said, we went one and two in best of one. We did split best of three. Um, definitely ran the way that I thought it was going to run. Um, you know, definitely, you know, it is a top 1K deck, but a couple things uh, with this one certainly uh, needs to fix the mana base up a little bit. Um, I would probably throw a Torbrand in here, to be honest. Um, and I would also throw in some of those uh, direct one damage spike spells um, and kind of change things things up just just slightly uh with this deck you can certainly do it because everything's at two you do have a huge risk um with everything at two but again we just did not uh we did not curve out well um certainly in the last match so uh mono white life gain is a huge problem for this deck um one of the ways that you could uh make it better is the way that i also play with with my uh, mono red deck is throwing shadow spear shadow spear is going to protect you uh, get you some of that life gain back it's probably certainly worth throwing in this deck to be honest um, you could even move up uh, the curve a little bit and throw in uh, some of the some of the fervent champions um, to really round out and get a little bit more aggressive on that on that space. I really like the concept uh, with Outlaws Merriment. It takes a little bit uh, to get there. Obviously, we we weren't as successful as I was hoping, but just maybe an off day. Um, what I what I would say about this deck certainly fun to play i i really do like it i like what the what's going on here again a top 1000 deck um which is always always means something um in terms of tier list though uh and the meta i you know i think there's room for these aggressive decks however this one just did not seem to fully do it i like merriman at the top there's still enough removal and things going on in both best of one and best of three um you know this deck was a best of three deck uh, I, I would say mid tier two uh, to top of tier three for this and best of one and and honestly probably similar for 
probably similar for for best of three uh didn't play well for me we did hit a hard run um but you know playing against the best uh tier one deck for best of one and then kind of a mid mid tier level deck for best of three um and and not getting the results that we want um and and not only in one match but across several several matches um creates a problem so uh i really really enjoyed the deck super fun certainly something worth playing obviously you can get to mythic it's a top thousand deck so you guys you don't need to worry about that um and as i always say there's there's many decks that you can use to get to mythic um but definitely enjoyed the deck love the construct um a uh, shout out again to day torio on this uh you can obviously critique me and say hey mithras was playing this wrong or doing this wrong but um i know several of you will and you can call me out on that first best of one match on the bad bad mana drop i got it so um, with that said, Planeswalkers, I hope you guys enjoyed the videos today, or the video today, or today's episode of Top Deck. Excited to cover this one. I thought it was a lot of fun. We ran an Outlaws Merriment um, in one of, uh, in, in the deck, either earlier this week or uh, late last week. You guys can check that video out. So, um, Planeswalkers, appreciate your support. Truly, I do. Just want to say thank you, as always. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel down over there. I'm trying to make my way towards uh, 10,000 subs this year. Every little bit helps, so I appreciate it. And feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. If you liked it on my uh, terrible, terrible bad luck and lands, lands and scooping, uh, <laughs> throw me some sympathy and likes anyway. But uh, with that said, Planeswalkers, truly, uh, again, thank you. Um, you can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, stay up to date on that. Uh, and we'll see you again soon. Uh, take care and stay safe. We got a lot more coming your way here. We're getting close on the uh, time now for uh, Kaldheim. Uh, very excited for that. I think we got a lot of fun things in store. So Planeswalkers, till next time, uh, I'll see you soon.